Now that we've established a basic introduction to the keys to success, the goals and the adaptations that all plants have in terms of transporting things from the environment which they get the stuff and then throughout the plant which they need to do via transport, we're now going to be looking at the actual way that we go, let's say, from roots to shoots, the whole transport sort of hierarchy that's seen throughout a plant. And in order to understand that, we have to first look at the very bottom of that structure. We have to first look at roots. And so a lot of this flowchart is going to be a, a summary of what we've already established and it's important to reiterate as we go through by looking at the root structure and anatomy. Because once we understand root structure and overall anatomy of the root, then we can take a look at the functions that are associated with transport directly related to this structure and anatomy that we'll establish. Now, as we go through this, I would suggest looking at figure 35.14. There are going to be lots of terms in this flowchart, um, about seven different structures and anatomical features of a root you should understand. 35.14 summarizes that pretty well. So let's begin. So there are going to be seven terms to understand. The first one would be epidermis. We've seen this before, nothing new to us. What we'll just say is that the epidermis, to remind ourselves, is a single layer of tissue. Single layer of tissue and more specifically this single layer of tissue covers the entire root so it's like a skin it's an outer skin that covers the root epi meaning all around dermis meaning skin layer so this is what we have epidermis is our first term another term we've seen before root hairs also not new to us but again we'll just summarize what this means root hairs what are their jobs their job is to overall increase absorption that's their number one goal, is to do absorption. Absorption of what? Absorption of water. And also of water, with water would come mineral ions. So whenever you have minerals, and minerals are dissolved in water, those minerals have turned into ions. They've turned into charged minerals, and thus you will have these two go hand in hand together whenever they're being absorbed. Something like uh, plants need nitrates, right? Remember that from our previous uh, ecology lectures? That's the basic idea. A nitrate ion would be dissolved. It's a mineral within the water that's within the root, within the soil that the root hairs would absorb. Basic idea there. Now, another thing about root hairs, Root hairs actually do not have a cuticle, so there's no cuticle here. Remember, a cuticle is that waxy outer covering. Why would you not want a waxy outer covering at the root hairs? Well, because you're trying to do absorption. If you had a cuticle here, this would stop H2O absorption, or at least hinder it greatly. And that's not a good thing to do when your primary function here is to absorb water and mineral ions that come with that water. So those are our root hairs. Moving forward, we also have seen this term before, a cortex. This is another part of a root. All of these are parts of roots. A cortex. A cortex is a loosely packed arrangement of parenchyma cells. So let's write that down as loosely packed parenchyma cells. Now, if you remember from the previous lecture on plant anatomy, parenchyma cells Chyma just means infusion, and parenchyma are those, those cells that can adapt, that can, I consider them those that can fill this, assume the shape of the container that they need to fill. They're very adaptable, they're very uh, maneuverable and changeable, and they're very much present within this cortex region. Now, over here in this cortex region, you will also, for this reason, because you have these parenchyma cells, you will also have, in, in addition to that, large inter- cellular spaces. Notice how I said intercellular spaces, not intra, but intercellular spaces. Now what's the difference? Intercellular means spaces between each cell, between each parenchyma cell there will be a large space. If I had said intracellular space, that would be not between but within, and we're not saying that, we're saying inter. Inter means between, intra means within. Right now we're saying between every single cell there's a large amount of space. Why is that? That's because of transport. Transport is going to be necessary here because this large space will provide itself or become a pathway for water uptake, H2O uptake. And if you have a pathway for H2O uptake, that means water can go throughout the plant. And if it can go throughout the plant, you are succeeding in one of your number one needs, which is transporting those resources that you get from the environment. In addition, large intercellular spaces between the cells provides aeration of the root. 
Now, aeration of root, I don't want to talk about this too much because we're going to get back on this idea. Basically here, when we do things like transpiration and we do cohesion and adhesion, when you have air involved as well, those are going to allow for an increased success in H2O uptake. That's all we sort of need to understand for right now. More on this later. So now we have an epidermis, root hairs, cortex, that's three, four more to go. We also are going to be looking at the endodermis. So now we're going a little bit deeper. The epidermis was on the outside, the endodermis is on the inside. This is a critical part of the root structure and anatomy, specifically when we're looking at um, tr transport within a plant. Now, in the endodermis, we can broadly consider this a boundary. All the endodermis is, is a boundary between the cortex and the steel. So that's why we did cortex right before. Between cortex and plus steel. And guess what we'll do right after? The steel. So cortex, steel, right in between it, there's an endodermis layer, an endodermal layer, I should say. What is an endodermal layer? This is also a single layer, just like the epidermis counterpart, single layer of tissue. But this single layer is actually of snugly fit cells. So they're very tightly fit next to each other. And this is in contrast to the cortex, which was loosely packed. The cortex had loosely packed parenchyma cells, nice and flexible. Here we have single layer of snugly fit cells within this endodermal layer. Now, why do we have this sort of tightness that's happening here? Well, this tightness is directly related to regulation. Specifically, the endodermis functions in the following way. It regulates the movement Again, that's a big theme of today. Movement, transport, conduction, all of those things. It regulates movement of, and this is also something you're going to be seeing a lot. Whenever you see H2O, automatically assume that minerals are going to be dissolved within H2O. So both of them will go hand in hand throughout to today's lecture. So this endodermis regulates the movement of H2O and minerals into the xylem. Remember, the xylem is our end goal. That's where we really want the water and the associated minerals to get to because the xylem is throughout the plant. It's not just in the root, it's all throughout the plant and it has a whole sort of highway system of transporting water. So in order to get there, you have to get through the epidermis layer, you have to get through the root hairs, be absorbed, you have to get through the cortex area, you have to get through this tightly packed endodermal layer and then hopefully you can reach the xylem. Now, another sort of interruption in that reaching of the xylem would be the next under next root structure in anatomy and that would be the casparian strip so this is actually a new term so it's worth pointing out and sort of uh, elaborating on so it's called the casparian strip this is going to come up later when we talk more about the mechanism of water movement but for right now understand that the casparian strip is a band like region so let's write this down it's a band like region. So it's like a, a one sort of strip. That's why it's called the Casparian strip. A band-like region surrounding each endodermal cell. So it's surrounding each endodermal cell. So this is exterior to the endodermal cell. Now, the one thing I want you to understand is that this Casparian strip is actually surrounding the endodermal cell. It is not within the endodermal cell. Thus, I want you to also write down that the Casparian strip is not, because it's not within the cell, it's only around the cell, it's not in the cell wall, CW for cell wall. Now, that's a big important distinction because when we talk about its function a little bit more, we'll understand why it's not in the cell wall and why it's just sort of a hanging out on the outside of these snugly fit endodermal cells. In addition, the Casparian strip contains a new material that you need to understand, a new polymer structure called suberin. Contains suberin. Now, what is suberin? Suberin is, for right now, all we need to know, it's a fatty waterproof material. So this seems a bit counterintuitive for talking about all this water movement and transport and we stick in this fatty waterproof material, this hydrophobic material. What sense does that make? More on that later as we go through this lecture. So we have one, two, three, four, five, two more root structures to go and we'll look at now something we've seen before, the steel. So we have the cortex, the endodermal layer, 
within the endodermal layer you have, or around the endodermal cells, you have this Casparian strip. Then you go a little bit further inside the root, you get this steel. And the steel, if it's found in the root, remember, not in the stem right now, there's a distinction. When the steel is found within the root, it will consider or contain a vascular cylinder. And that vascular cylinder will have within it, that vascular cylinder will be containing, not surrounding, but containing the xylem and phloem vascular structures, okay? So we finally got to the X plus P, the xylem and phloem. And then finally, last thing about root structure and anatomy, um, this is going to be a critical part in sort of combining two lectures that we've already seen. And this, uh, this would be the mycorrhizae. The mycorrhizae, remember, are fungi, but they're mutualistic fungi. They hang out by the roots. They're really, really helpful for plants because indirectly, because they're there and they're fungi and they're also very good at absorption, they actually are going to be very good and in helping out in increasing, up sign for increase, surface area of the roots. And if you increase the surface area of the roots, what do you automatically get? You automatically get more absorption. And there we go. So we have lots of absorption happening in the roots. We have these layers upon layers that are within the root. Take a look at this figure. It really helps show you the layering of the root structure uh, a little bit better than just terms. The terms here are just for you to remember and understand the basics behind the structure and function associated with H.